you could say it'll be a waste of time. What do you reckon, Chris? Huh? If I got the big stopper out, it'll be a waste of time. Oh, don't worry. He, he liked it. So I've just tried a few different shots and I found a magical shutter speed that I like to work with which is 15 seconds. So ignore what I was saying about the, the big stopper being a waste of time. It's, it's actually turned out to be really good. At 24 mil and maybe a little bit more than that, more like 30, 35, I've zoomed in a bit, I've honed in on a few, a few uh, four granny rocks and they just look cool. And what's going on around it is really nice and, and smooth with the different blues. The blues from the, the, the lake to the sky are different. We've got the moon going on as well. It's all kicking off. It's kicking off, Chris. I love it. It's kicking off. Who needs sunset light when you've got daylight? Standing now, calling all the people here to see the show. These are pretty tricky conditions for landscape photography. The sun is still pretty high in the sky. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, it's creating very harsh light and it's very, very, very windy. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is I've got the camera as low as I possibly can uh, to try and get out of the wind as much as I possibly can. I'm doing a long exposure of about 30 seconds and I'm using a rock as a bit of foreground interest. I need something, give me something wonderful. So Andy, the big question is, Britain's favourite view, is it Andy Mag's favourite view? Ho oh, ho! Oh, what a question! See, this is a constant battle I have. Is it better to look up at the mountain or be at the top of the mountain looking down? And I'll be honest, I haven't got an answer for you. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I just can't compare it to some of the views I've had from the top of Ben Nevis from the top of Snowdon. So if you watch my video, you will know that Andy doesn't use ND grads. So I've lent him my two-stop soft edge grad just to pull the sky down a little bit on this shot that he's working on. So let's see how he got on. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon now. Uh, we've had a quick chat and we're gonna hang around till about four and see what happens as the sun dips a bit lower. And then we're gonna jump in the car and we're gonna head home because we wanna watch the rugby because England are playing Scotland in the Six Nations this evening. Celebrate like no other. Eddie Jones, England, stunned. They have so rarely tasted defeat. But for the first time in 10 years, Scotland will drink from the Calcutta Cup. I'm going to say goodnight, I'm going to turn in because I've been awake since 5 o'clock and I think it's time. i am currently got a beer and I think it's time to hit the hay. I will see you guys in the morning. Goodnight. Another day in paradise, me and Seasail, we are heading to Duke of Portland Boathouse. We are, yep. In your opinion, maybe the best or the most photographed? Certainly one I would say in the top five iconic Lake District photographs. Right, so because of that reason, we are going there and we are up nice and early. It's freezing cold, of course, so let's go. Really popular location. A couple of photographers, we've got a bit of a squad at the moment. There's about five of us who are photographing the boathouse. One thing that's obvious about this location is there only seems to be one way to shoot it. 
so I might try and try and see if I can get a better or a different composition at least and we've got these wintry trees here which might make for a good frame so I might come up here afterwards and shoot with the uh, the branches out of focus and it might give it more of an eerie sp being spied on <laughs> look but uh, one thing that is weird is in that boathouse people are asleep in there because you can hire it out and it's probably a bit weird that there's five blokes stood on the corner of the road photographing it <laughs> so that's a weird concept so 200 quid a night just to uh, have five blokes photograph you in the morning <laughs> As you can see, I've got this bright orange jacket on this morning. I think it's really important to try and be as safe as you possibly can because when you're shooting this scene, you're standing right on the edge of the road. Uh, so just have your wits about it and make sure you keep an eye on the cars. I've shot this scene on a number of occasions before um, and I've usually shot it wide, but this time I'm trying to go for something slightly different. So I'm cropping much, much closer to the boathouse. <laughs> I'm just finishing up with a much wider shot now, I'm at 24mm and it's got this lovely effect where because the sun is rising to my left the scene gets goes from light to dark, left to right and I think I really like that effect so check this out. Right now Lisa, what are you making of this scene then mate? Well it's nice and calm, which is nice, very serene, no wind, which is good. So it's got to be a long exposure. Hmm, this is whether to go tight or whether to go wide. If you go wide, you can get all that blue sky and nice calm lake in, or if you go nice and tight, you'll get that sun-drenched boathouse. So it's, uh, it's a difficult one which to choose. And I think I might just do both. <laughs> Why not? No more pain and no more shame and misery. You can bring me down. You can bring me down. Right, I'm going to ninja style to get down to this beach because I've got the classic shot. I've got a shot through the reeds. I'm just going to get shot shot from the beach now. Something along the lines of this, which I think will look quite nice. Uh, yes, that's great because there's a car that's parked on the drive, and from here. The tree is obs obscuring it, so that's perfect. I'm starting to realise something. I really enjoy shooting landscapes portrait. Now, I don't know if that's because of the emergence of the mobile phone and Instagram and things like that, but I genuinely love shooting portrait with a wide angle lens. I love huge foregrounds and I love how it just fades away into the distance. There are pitfalls with there are drawbacks with wide angle lenses, yes of course everyone knows, but I think if a wide lens, me and Chris were talking about this last night, if a wide lens is used just right, it gives you the most amazing perspective on, on, your, on your location. So my advice to you would be, use a wide angle lens and never stay there. Don't do that. I bet they never put the view from the balcony looking towards the photographers in the brochure. And also after years, I'm talking years, of doing property photography, I'm starting to realise the true use of a wide angle lens and that's not for estate agents. It's to use, it's the secret of wide angle lenses is just to get as low as possible because if you can do that, you can really, really show that your foreground is maybe just as important as your background because sometimes we find a location that we like and we just end up putting up with the foreground, finding something just to anchor the image, just because that's what we think we should do. But when we find something that is actually cool, ice, reeds, shallow water, we can really show it off. And it really leads you into the back of the image. So that for me is the secret, get down low, like I'm doing here. And you can almost point it down and use that rule of thirds put your background on the upper third, your foreground on your, on your lower third and you'll be reeked.
On my way to find this lake, I just saw this, oops, let's move the little bit of muff. Just on the way here, I just found this puddle, frozen puddle, and it had little rings around it where it wasn't frozen in the middle and it was on the outside and it just looked really cool. So photographed it and then it became a self-portrait. So then I jumped on the back and hopefully got a reflection. So hopefully that'll look good. But anyway, this is my last shot of the day. Last shot in the Lake District until when, I don't know. But one thing I've got to say is just how amazing the Lake District is on a day like this. I know it doesn't look like this all the time and you might be watching this thinking I'd much prefer the Lake District when it's grey and you know when it's misty and that's what it really looks like but I think seeing mountains in the sun makes me happy it genuinely makes me happy so I'm just going to get this shot done now I'm doing ultra minimalist composition that's what I've learned from hanging around with Chris too long it's all about the minimalism the Lake District is, for want of a better word, for want of a better of two words, bloody brilliant. So my time in the lakes has come to an end and it's been such an inspiring way to spend a weekend. So massive love for the Lake District. Big love to Chris. Chris, mass massive thank you, mate, for, for hosting me this weekend. And... I just can't wait to get up here again. It's such a cliche that every time I go somewhere cool, I say I can't wait to come back, but I genuinely cannot wait to come back. And I want to do maybe a little bit more mountaineering next time. Maybe go up a few, a few of the fells and maybe just have a little bit more of an explore. Do come over and follow me on Instagram if you want to see some of the shots that I took this weekend. It'd be lo lovely to have you over. So on that note, I want to say thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all of the above. And I will see you guys soon. And tell your friends, folks. Right, see you, folks. See you in a few weeks. Uh, this is the f infamous... No, not infamous. <laughs> <laughs>